Here's Brody Brazil. Within the last 36 hours, Hurricane Milton made landfall and then made its way across the state of Florida. And we have to begin the video like this. So far, it seems like the death toll and the amount of fatalities are much lower than anybody feared, anticipated, or maybe even projected. So at this point, it seems like that, most importantly, is a good thing. Loss of life is the main factor, but there's always the property damage aspect and the cost of damage that a natural disaster causes like this. But there's also something else that stands out, and that was the damage last night to Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, longtime home of the Tampa Bay Rays. The roof is basically all gone. There are still some pieces of that Kevlar fabric intact. But the bottom line is that stadium is going to need a lot of repair and attention to be ever used again. And I'm also not sure that we understand the extent of the damage, how much water got in there, how much damage was done because of that. At least it wasn't sewer water, we understand, just rainwater and storm water. But that is a building that's meant to have indoor aspects. It's never been outside like that before. So I assume that we will figure out the damage and the full report of that building in the near future. But it, it definitely catches your eye, catches your attention. We saw the video last night of those fabric pieces flapping in the wind and just probably looks a lot worse than it actually is. Of course, there is all of the structural component there, not just the fabric, which yeah, kind of rips away like a tarp, but how about the rest of the structure? Did it get bent or jostled to the point that it needs to be drastically repaired or replaced? I mean, it is going to take a while for engineers and authorities to to truly figure this out. But you can also see it's not just the baseball diamond that's still in there. This building, this facility was also set up to house first responders when they needed shelter in protecting the public from the storm. So all of a sudden, a place that was supposed to be safe and was supposed to be a shelter turned into the absolute opposite place that nobody wanted or needed to be. This is what it used to look like from inside. And you know what? This is what it will probably look like again. And it's an interesting situation with Tropicana Field, which is only now supposed to be used for several more years, right? Like the Rays are moving forward with their plans to build a new stadium right next door. Also a dome. I don't know if it's going to use that same Kevlar fabric, uh, which just did not hold up. And we'll get into that later on in the video, what they expected this building to sustain versus maybe what it faced. It was probably pretty close to that upper limit. But maybe when they do this roof and replace this roof in the near future next time around, maybe they'll choose... A darker color. I don't know if you can totally do that with the sun and heat effects, but certainly maybe some rethinking there. Here's another picture from daytime, this via Fox 5 Atlanta. So it was one thing to see it last night for the very first time. And there's a bunch of drone video, which is even more dramatic. I'm just choosing to use still images here for you. But uh, a lot of cleanup. Don't get me wrong. A lot of work here. But I, I feel like the overarching theme is no structural damage to the rest of this building and it probably looks worse than it is. And let me just also stop right here and say there has been so much other damage throughout the state of Florida. Let's put this into perspective. This was basically an empty baseball stadium. This is going to get taken care of. This is nowhere near homes and businesses and small businesses and community centers being destroyed and rendered unusable because of a storm and a hurricane like this. So let's also, yeah, again, put this into perspective. This is just a baseball stadium. There's many months before the baseball season for Tampa Bay would ever resume again. So let's let's not lose too much of our our soul over over just seeing something like this. Yeah, it catches your eye, it catches your attention, but uh, there's a lot worse things out there and a lot better things to be paying attention to right now. And this is what it looked like on the inside. This is what it was set up for. All those cots. And it looks like you can see in center field there probably food and maybe even some medical supplies and clean drinking water and all that stuff that they were prepared for. That is hundreds of cots, if not thousands of cots. Oh, my goodness. They say a baseball field is about four acres. And so that's almost like at least three and a half acres of cots, just straight cots. Well, I guess the infield is not filled up. Let's just let's call it two acres of cots. How many cots are out there? to house those first responders and people on the front lines that were going to be covering the, the aftermath of this storm. So all of that kind of wasted 
Fortunately, it didn't seem like anybody was hurt or nothing there was damaged. It was just a bad situation and opportunity. So the Tropicana Field Roof, 34 years old, the building went up in 1990. It was built to withstand winds of 115 miles an hour, and I believe they said when Milton made landfall on the western coast of Florida and right there near St. Petersburg, it was about 105. So you just never know. With wind shear, with a gust, with a burst, maybe there was a hole in the roof. That's all it needs for that wind to get up there, get under it, and push that roof right on out and rip that Kevlar up. So it was close to the, to the limits of what it was built to withstand. Uh, it's just amazing that this happened. It had 180, I say, should say still does, has, has 180 miles of cable. The dome at Tropicana Field is the world's largest cable-supported domed roof. And so, again, it doesn't seem like the structure itself, like the skeleton itself, sustained much damage. Like, you can't clearly see that it's all bent up and out of shape. But they'll definitely go ahead and investigate that and, and um, inspect it for sure. But, yeah, this was a building that was set up to shelter first responders. And I, I keep going back to that because maybe now that will never be used. This site will never be used for anything like that in the three or four or five years that it, that it has remaining hosting the baseball team. I don't know what they're going to do with it. If the Tampa Bay Rays ultimately do build that new stadium next door, I don't know what's in store for Tropicana Field, but maybe now we should rethink using this venue for a storm shelter, something like that. But it's not the first time that we've seen <clears throat> issues with a dome and a roof and a collapse. This was the Metrodome in Minneapolis just a couple weeks before Christmas 2010. So this was, what, 14 years ago. And I'll never forget waking up that morning knowing that the game between the Vikings and, gosh, who were they even playing? It was probably going to get canceled. They had a huge snowstorm. But as part of that snowstorm, all of the snow was sitting on the kind of inflated roof of the Metrodome. And so it sunk the roof, the roof was sagging, and then at some point you see the hole like right in the middle of the stadium, the snow just burrowed right through the top of the roof and landed all out on the field. The roof was obviously sunken by that point, but now there's a huge hole in it. But they fixed that roof. They didn't replace it, they only repaired it, but even that hole right there was an $18.3 million fix. Now it does, again, seem like more of the skeletal structure of it. That dome was held up. Uh, with pressure. So this is different at Tropicana Field. There's like the skeleton. This one was held up by air pressure. And so that's why it was sagging and sinking when the snow was sitting on it. But even that was an $18.3 million fix. However, it was fixed. They continued playing football there that year. They played again the next year. So the point is for anybody that looks at Tropicana Field and says, oh, like this is rendered unusable for, for years or forever to come. That's not the case. They will get it fixed. It just goes to show you that stuff like this has happened before. The fix will happen. I imagine the cost is likely going to be covered by insurance. But again, I also wonder about the interior and the rain and internal water damage and, and whatever else the, the facility and structure suffered because of the water that got inside via the storm. And again, I, I, I keep harping on this, but it probably looks worse than it is when you see all those pieces of Kevlar fabric lying around and the stadium open for the first time ever. Tropicana Field is not a dome as of this morning, uh, but it probably is going to be an expensive fix. And for a stadium that only has maybe a couple more years left in its usable life for the Tampa Bay Rays, we think, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if the bill comes back and it's $224 million or something like that. I mean, you could almost kind of you could almost kind of do a, a guessing game on this. Here, I'll, I'll say it. I think it's $220, $220 million to fix the roof. We'll find out. When the cost comes out, maybe I'll make a video on that uh, just to see how exactly this goes. But uh, I'm obviously thinking about everybody in Florida, anybody impacted by this. My best wishes are with you and uh, hope everything turns out as best as possible. And again, we're still kind of following the aftermaths and the ramification of the, the hurricane that has passed through, and there's a lot of people right now still without, um, you know, a basic amenities and, and clean drinking water. So wish everybody the best, and uh, hopefully we all get through this, and, and hopefully the numbers don't change a whole lot. All right, that's the end of this video. Make sure you go down there and you hit subscribe on this channel. That way I can definitely see you back here next time. <laughs>